If you plan on taking your off-road vehicle on more than just an easy dirt road, one of the first things you should consider upgrading is the armor underneath, like this aluminum belly skid pan from Artec. I'm a little overdue for doing this upgrade on the 392, and in this video, we're gonna install some belly skid pans, we're gonna install some fender liners, and we're gonna do some really cool stuff in the rear with the exhaust and install some stuff on Regina's Jeep. Plus, I'm gonna give you a little update on what's going on with the 392, because I know there's been a lot of questions since the last video. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today we're in the garage and I've got all kinds of aluminum scattered all over here. And what we are going to do is we are gonna be installing some Artec aluminum skid plates, some inner fender liners, and a little exhaust protection on the Jeep Wrangler 392. And at least it's back in the garage, which we will talk about. Once we get to the transfer case, we'll discuss a little bit about what's going on. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna bring Regina's Jeep in here and we're also going to armor hers up because again, she is really wanting to hit some harder trails and this is gonna be a very important upgrade for her. So I've got my buddy Chris from Artec here. He's gonna give me a hand. Let's show you kind of what we're installing and then, uh, and then we'll get started. All right, guys, so we've broken out a ton of cool stuff, and I've got Chris here from Artec. Man, thank you for coming down, making the drive down here. He is the vice president of product development, and you've had a pretty big hand in making this all come together, yeah? Absolutely, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, man, I'm so glad because I could use the extra set of hands. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what we have here and what are some of the differences uh, from the, just the standard JL to the 392 that we're doing. Absolutely. So with this belly pan, the biggest difference is always the engine skid. So the transfer case and the fuel tank skid, they're always the same for all the JLs. Okay, and we've got the nice burly Magnaflow exhaust. Now that's, you know, what everybody loves is the 392's exhaust. Absolutely. But we've got uh, something specific for this one. What have you guys developed? Yeah, so we worked with Rich at Magnaflow and we were able to develop a custom skid set that works for the exhaust side with their resignators that they've developed. And you guys also have this for just the stock exhaust as well, right? Absolutely. So well, this is gonna be very nice, guys, because you, as you've seen, I tore up the stock exhaust and when we put the prototype exhaust on here, well, I might have banged that one up. <laughs> Over as well. So having this skid plate is going to be super cool. All right, absolutely. Let's uh, let's get started, guys. We're going to start installing this stuff. This is a project you can tackle yourself in your garage in about four to six hours with some basic hand tools. But for me, having an extra set of hands while I'm trying to film it is something I always welcome. Plus, we are installing some first off design products on the 392 and Regina's Jeep, so having the man who engineered them is a huge asset. Before we can start installing the new shiny stuff, the transmission cross support skid, which is only held on by three bolts, needs to come off, and the transfer case skid, which is only held on by six bolts, needs to be removed. And you're going to notice my transfer case looks shiny and new. All right, we just took two of the skid plates off, and one is the transfer case skid plate. And I mentioned there's kind of an update on the uh, transfer case. So if you remember in the video I talked about recently about the 392, <sighs> The transfer case failed on me and uh, I was stuck on a hill with no four wheel drive and I could not make it up the hill. Uh, the clutch pack that is in the 392's transfer case was toast. And that's a challenge with the transfer case that comes here. It's not a standard gear and chain transfer case that you would get in the normal JLs and even the JT's, 392 has a clutch pack. What I did learn is that with this transfer case, we need to make sure we're changing the oil in there a lot more frequently. Obviously, I'm running bigger tires, I'm running it hard, and I'm towing, which has added a lot of extra stress to that because we are all wheel drive, and so those clutches are constantly working. So, what we're gonna do going forward is a couple things. One, I'm going to train, change that transfer case fluid every 15,000 miles, and two, there are a couple folks out there that have already come up with some solutions for coming up with a different way to manage this transfer case and even replacing it. So we'll be looking at some of those options in the future, but right now I was very lucky to get a brand new transfer case installed, so we are good to go. Now, we're gonna get some good protection on there, so hopefully we don't bang it up. So next thing we need to do is pull off that gas tank skid, and Chris was telling me that thing weighs about 40 to 45 pounds. It's a massive skid plate. 
And the one we're gonna be putting in there weighs about a quarter of that. So I'm gonna pull that out and then we're gonna start getting the goods installed. And I just wanna give a big thanks to Jerry at Shift Auto Works and Kat at the Jack Powell dealership in Escondido because without their help, the 392 would still be out of commission. Okay, back to removing one more item from the Jeep and that is the fuel tank skid plate. In the Jeep Wrangler, it is a very robust steel protective skid plate. But you can't just unbolt this because it is designed to actually hold the fuel tank in place. So you need to make sure you support the fuel tank before you remove that. What we have done here is we've squeezed a ratchet strap in between the skid plate and the tank by removing all the bolts except for two, which we made very loose. That allows you to kind of fish that ratchet strap up in there. It's a little bit of a cumbersome task, but if you do this with very little fuel in the tank and a second set of hands, it's very manageable. The stock skid plate weighs about 45 pounds, so you need to support this with either a jack stand or having a friend before you let those last two bolts loose. We took our time here because with the tank being a little awkward to remove and its weight, the last thing we wanted was this to drop down on us abruptly. This is probably the hardest part of this entire process, but don't let it intimidate you. This is easily done with a little bit of patience. And here's what the old skid plate next to our brand new one looks like. You can see I've accumulated a little bit of dirt up inside this thing over the last 20 plus states we've had the 392 at so far. What's really nice is this new Artec aluminum skid plate is going to weigh a whole lot less than this old steel one. Now that the fuel tank skid is removed, Chris installed the supplied Artec tank strap and this is going to be very nice in the future if I need to remove the skid plate. Chris, man, I cannot thank you enough for helping out, dude. You are making this look easy. I'm sure I would have been struggling with that strap a little bit more. That's pretty cool now that the tank is secured by that strap. Yeah, absolutely. So as soon as we're able to get that tank strap on, now the fuel tank is permanently secured to the Jeep's frame. So no matter what, any kind of services you have to do, taking off all the skid plates and everything, you're able to not worry about that fuel tank coming down on you, even if you do upgrades, long arm suspensions, all those kinds of things. Yeah. It really makes it easy to be able to service the Jeep but having that fuel tank permanently secured. 100% dude, I love it. And one thing I gotta ask, this mat that you've been sliding around on looks way more comfortable than my Creeper. What is this thing, where'd you get that? It's awesome. So I got this from a friend of mine who worked with Bedrug uh -huh. and it's called the track mat. It's made in the USA. It's super easy. I have the same frustrations as everybody yeah. rolling around on the creeper, trying to get some leverage on bolts and yeah. you're just kind of moving around all the time. This track mat is awesome where it just sticks to the floor and when you want it to move, you can really slide it around and anytime you need to get leverage on something, it's super easy oh, to be able to work. Them. Hey, when we're done here today, I'm ordering one. <laughs> okay, what's next? So next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the Magnaflow specific cross member. So it's a cross member support that goes from side to side of the frame and it supports our fuel tank skid and, it, uh, and the transfer case skid. So we're gonna go ahead and get started getting that in. Awesome. Before installing the cross member, there's a large piece of rubber that is applied to it to prevent it from rubbing on the gas tank. Then there are a couple single nut plates that are placed inside the frame, which provide some extra bolting locations for this system. Now it's time to start adding the good stuff. The heavy duty cross member gets bolted up and Chris mentioned that this one is specifically designed to allow for the MagnaFlow exhaust. It's going to make sure there's plenty of space for their larger exhaust pipes while keeping the skid plates nice and tucked up tight under the Jeep when I'm off road. With the cross member all bolted up, the new transfer case skid can be installed. You can see how flat and smooth this armor is going to be. It's extremely strong because Artec uses what's called 6061 hardened aluminum for their system, whereas some other manufacturers use 5052 aluminum, which is actually about 40% softer than this strong stuff you see here. I'm going to get a nice smooth underbelly with this added clearance, saving some weight over steel, and this is gonna be very durable. Next, there are a couple large carriage bolts that have to be placed inside the fuel tank skid, and we use just a little bit of a tape to hold them in place because once you raise it up, you're not gonna have access to these. 
And this tank skid is so much lighter than the stock one. With the transfer case and fuel tank skids loosely bolted into place, it's time to install the two engine skid brackets that attach to the underside of the engine mount. It's a tight fit in here to get these in, but with a little patience, they bolt up with no issues. Having some solid protection under the 392's oil pan is really going to be some good peace of mind for me when I'm out on those challenging obstacles. One less thing to worry about. The skid easily bolts up to the newly installed mounts and the front side of the transfer case skid. Chris, I can't even keep up with you, man. You're blasting <laughs> through this. Yeah. For the average guy, how long would you expect this install to take? Typically, I would say roughly three hours just to kind of give a buffer time for getting your stuff together. But yeah, it's it's a pretty quick install. Yeah, it's but, really not too bad. By the time I'm setting up the camera to get the shot, you're like moving on to the next thing. I'm like, man, I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> Very easy install, guys. Now we have completed basically what would come in a standard JL kit. And then now we're gonna do is install kind of the Magnaflow exhaust 392 specific stuff. Absolutely. But this is pretty easy to do, guys. Man, I'm really happy with it. Now we still gotta go through and tighten everything up. Yep. Um, and then we got to do these. What do you think? How long should these take us? So the exhaust side skid for the main exhaust pipe, that will probably take maybe 40 minutes. Okay. And then the, the rear kit for the muffler system, that's going to be probably around an hour. Okay. And then we got to rip off all these fenders and install the fender liners yeah. too. So yeah. we still got a lot more to do guys, but uh, man, it's coming along quick. Absolutely. The exhaust skid is going to be a nice addition and help prevent any damage or hanging up on obstacles on the exhaust pipe. The skid plate was the easiest piece to install of this entire kit. There is a small L bracket that bolts on the front cross member and two hangers that easily bolt right up. The only thing we opted to do was to loosen up the exhaust clamps, then applied a little upward pressure and then tighten the clamps back down just to help raise the exhaust up just a little bit so there won't be any chances of it resting or rattling on the skid plate. Once everything was bolted up, we used one of the existing holes as a guide and drilled a hole in the bottom of the Jeep's frame. A step down bit works well for this and the hole is being drilled so this allows for a flag nut to be inserted into the frame and then you can insert the bolt and tighten it all up in the last little corner of the skid plate. Next time for the muffler skid and this is a new prototype for Artec and this is the first time they have installed one of these. So we took our time with this one just to check fitment, clearance and so Chris could take some notes of anything that might need to be changed when it comes ready for a production model. We opted to loosen up the muffler to allow some movement because it was the only way to gain access to the four trailer hitch bolts. Once those trailer hitch bolts are loose, there are two brackets that bolt up to them right in the center. And next, there are two more brackets, each on the outside that need to be mounted to where the body bolt is. But you do not want to use an impact gun on this. All right, Chris, we've been rocking and rolling, man. Uh, where are we at right now? So we are right in the middle of getting these support brackets all installed for the main support on the actual rear Magnaflow muffler. And we are moving out to the outside support brackets. So one of the more important things to note on uh, JLs is they have a lot of Loctite on the rear body mounting bolts. So the key note is never use an impact on body mounting bolts. You don't want to break loose that capture nut that's inside the body. So it's really important to just use a large breaker bar and gently break loose that bolt and work its way out. One of the important things too is depending on what is used, typically blue Loctite, you can put a little bit of heat on the end of that bolt with a torch and that will work as well but typically just using a little bit of muscle and doing it by hand is a lot better than an impact. It took a good bit of old-fashioned elbow grease to get these body bolts loose. There are two other bolts just next to them that need to be loosened and that's where the side muffler mount actually attaches. So once you have the clearance the bracket can be slipped into place and bolted up. Then the muffler skid plate can be bolted right up. Oh yeah, this fits nice and tight and it should prevent me from banging up these exhaust tips again. I'm sure there's some grumpy person out there commenting under their breath that these exhaust tips are too low or they're only meant for taking your Jeep to the mall. Well, here's what I have to say to you. Whatever. 
I love them. And it hasn't prevented me from having fun adventures yet. And they sound incredible. Today has been such a productive day. And this whole new belly pan skid looks incredibly good and is ready for some awesome hardcore trail duty. This was a full day to get this installed. And I think if I had been by myself and not trying to film it, it would have taken me at least a good half day. So I'm glad Chris was here because otherwise it would have taken us a lot longer. But we still have more to do. Well, good morning. It is day two and I am a cup and a half of coffee in this morning. And yesterday was, it was a lot of work, but I am super happy with how that came out. The skid plate under the 392 is so smooth and I am now gonna be a little more confident when we're out on the rocks that if I take a hit, I'm not gonna damage anything. It did take us a while to kind of mock up that Magnaflow exhaust skid because that's a prototype. It's the first time they've done that, but man, it looks super clean. It's super tight. Very excited with, uh, with this install. And now the plan is this morning, is we're going to install the inner fender liners on the 392 and then we're going to roll Regina's Jeep in here and get started on that. So we've got still quite a bit of work to do this morning, but first, just a little more caffeine. Removing the front inner fender liners is pretty simple. There are just a few 10 millimeter screws and a handful of Christmas tree nuts that can sometimes be a little temperamental, but get yourself a good plastic pry tool like this one and just work at them, you'll get them off. You might break a couple though. All right guys, that comes out pretty quick. The only thing is I did break two of those little Christmas tree clips, but those are good things just to have around <laughs> all the time. I have a couple in the little bin back there because they're used on so many different things. Just having a few extra of those will pay off. But you can go down to your local auto store and uh, pick some of those up. So no worries. Okay, I'm going get to get this mocked up and then we got to do a little trimming. Ah, I almost forgot. This small plastic piece just at the base of the fender also needs to be removed. And of course, it's held on with more Christmas tree nuts. All right, now, in the instructions, they tell you you can remove the entire fender, which we have not done because I think we can work our way around this. However, there is something that we are gonna do that's also a deviation, and we have to drill a couple holes, but we're gonna save ourselves from having to drill a little bit by using some of these C-clips. You may or may not have these, uh, but I think this is gonna make our life a little easier by not having to drill right next to this water bottle. So we're gonna use the C-clips, and then we're gonna mark the rest of our holes. This little C-clip worked perfectly and just helped simplify things. Next, I installed the rear section of the front inner fender liner and it just bolts right up. I did have to detach this wire harness from the fender well and before installing the new inner fender liner, I did add just a little extra protection around these wires. Next, I loosened up the nut next to the front body mount bolt and we'll be sliding in this clip into place and this will act as a front support for the new inner fender liner. Now time to test fit and mark the holes for drilling. There are three holes that need to be drilled, and I know some folks don't really enjoy drilling, but honestly, this is pretty straightforward. Okay, so we've got our three holes drilled out, and now what we're gonna do is install these little riv nuts and they supply you with a little riv nut tool and there's a little bolt in here that kind of helps crush this riv nut in there. And you can go on the Artec website and check that out, but I'm not gonna use that because years ago, I invested in one of these little riv nut tools. These are actually really inexpensive online. And so we're gonna use this guy and get these installed pretty quickly. If you don't have one of these, a nice little thing to have. Honestly, this is one of the tools I thought I'd only use once and probably never use again, but I've found so many uses for riv nuts over the years, and this thing has paid for itself time and time again, making it simple here for sure. With everything prepped, now we can finally mount up the new Artec inner fender liner, and this is going to look great. Now, you can powder coat this black or really any color you want, depending on the look you're going for. I'm super excited about this, and I think I'm going to keep it raw aluminum. Okay guys, so we've got both of the inner fender liners in the front installed. Chris has actually been working on the other side this entire time. 
and we're going to start cutting the plastic to make it fit because the last thing you want to do is just have these big gaps back here where mud and dirt and debris can get. So we're still going to have the plastic up here on the top and it'll just make it look nice and clean and who knows, eventually maybe we'll get some aftermarket fender. But this is going to be really nice, plus we've got a little venting. A brand new X-Acto knife blade is the way to go in cutting through these plastic fenders. It's really the easiest way. And it's also best to cut giving yourself extra so that way you can trim as you go. I actually thought this might be a little cumbersome and I was worried it wouldn't line up right, but you can visualize pretty easy where you need to make the cut. If you have aftermarket fenders, you won't need to worry about this step. All right, the fronts are all done. It looks great. Chris did an awesome job on that side. It was a big help because we were able to do it twice as fast. Now we're gonna jack up the rear and get started on the rears. The rears should be a little bit easier because I don't think there's any drilling. So here we go again with the Christmas tree nuts. Now remember, I said you should keep some extras on hand and I broke four out of the six, but thankfully we actually only need to reuse a couple of these. Chris didn't fare much better with his clips and as you can see here, he actually removed the entire fender, but more on that here in a second. Before you can test fit the rear liner and prep for the hole, which I was wrong, we do have to drill a hole, there are three sections that make it up that are quickly bolted together. Okay, we've been working on the rear fenders for just a few minutes and we got the, this one fully assembled and kind of mocked into place. Now Chris has been working on the other side and we were just kind of testing some stuff out. We actually pulled the fender and broke all but two clips. So Regina is going to run to the dealership and see if we can get some replacement clips. But what we decided to do on this side is not pull the fender off. We're just going to cut some of these clips to give us access to bolt this up. The other thing is we do have to drill just one small hole, but otherwise pretty easy install. Oh, one other thing, make sure you got good clearance before you try to stuff it in here behind the uh, fuel filler neck. We did just pull that back just a little bit to make some room. I went ahead and marked the three clips that are going to be removed. And once those are removed, you now have access to install bolts there. There is also this provided template that apparently my camera didn't want to focus on, but basically what you do is you bolt this up to one of the holes and it provides a bullseye target for where you're going to drill. Once the hole is drilled, then you've got several bolts to install and then back to work with the X-Acto knife and trimming the plastic inner fender liner and then we are done. Well except for the other fender, which we don't have enough clips to use to reinstall it. Fingers crossed, Regina is able to get some. And speaking of Regina, time to bring her Jeep in the garage. All right, the 392 is wrapped up, and man, if it wasn't for Chris's help, I'd still probably be working on the belly pan skid. Now, Regina took the 392, and she is off to go to the dealership to get some of those clips, so she's driving around without a fender right now, but that's okay. She'll be back and we will get that sorted and that will be buttoned up 100% ready to go and it looks so good. Now we've got her Jeep in the garage and we're going to kind of do the same thing, but it's a little different. The two door has some different pieces and there's a little different techniques. So we're gonna just uh, rip this apart and make it look nice. Chris, we've been rocking and rolling this morning, uh, and the two doors start to come together pretty fast. It is, it is. Uh, what are some way. of the unique components on the two door? Because it's definitely different than what we installed yesterday. Absolutely. So the main difference is obviously the four doors are much longer, and with the two doors, the gas tank is squished up and over the factory cross member. To make an easy installation for consumers, we did a two-piece fuel tank basically skid that mounts right behind the front lower control arm on that driver's side and then it has this standard squished transfer case skid yeah now you guys have been making two-door skid plates for years but this yeah. is a completely redesigned model is that correct this is yeah so i recently redesigned this to be very similar to how our current jls are uh, on the four-door versions and this just 
brings in that robust cross member uh, support to be able to really have that same feel and simple installation and basically just makes it rock solid underneath the two door Jeeps. All right, Regina just got back from the dealership and she brought back a bag of clips. And I thought these would be about a dollar. Chris guessed they would be about $2. Come to find out, they were $2.90 per clip. That's a little much, but we were able to get 15 clips, which was basically all they had left unless we wanted to buy a fender. We could have got the clips on the fender, they said. But we have enough to get that other fender back on there. So if you are going to do this install, I highly recommend you leave the fenders on and maybe even go down and grab a couple extra clips just in case. But it was nice that we were able to get those. Guys, we just finished doing Regina's Jeep and it looks great. And the 392, we're gonna get that fender on and that thing is ready to go. Having those belly pan skids is gonna be so confidence inspiring when we're out on the trails. It's gonna be so nice having those. They are such a well-designed product. A huge thanks to Chris for coming out and helping me because if he wasn't here, if I didn't have that extra set of hands and his insight because he's done many of these and helped engineer them, I'd probably still be working on the bottom of the 392. So big thanks to him. I will leave links down below, guys, if you are interested in getting some of these skid plates plus some of the tools we used. I will leave links down there for those as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us. Definitely get yourself some armor on your Jeep. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.